Hi, my name is Carol Williams. Thank you very much for joining us on CAN TV 21 here, Veterans Issues. Veterans Issues is a weekly program every Thursday night at 6.30. I'm representing the United States Veterans Art Program. We rotate through once a month. This is our night for rotating with you in Chicago. This is a live hotline show. We'd love to have your comments, your questions. The number is there on your screen, 312. 738-1060. The United States Veterans Art Program uh, the, has a mission of increasing the representation of veterans in the arts community. And we do this a couple of different ways. But the way that we do this tonight is to highlight local veterans who are artists in all types of different types of art uh, and show you what they do on the TV show here. Uh, tonight we have a person who works with glass. Uh, we've never had anybody who uh, does anything like this before. I think you'll really be amazed at the types of things that we're going to show you tonight. Uh, the other part of our mission is to actually donate and present what we call resources, artistic tools, to both individual veterans and to VA medical centers, generally we work through the recreation therapy departments within those facilities, both federal and state. Uh, you can see what we do and contact us through our website. I'm going to show you that right now. We have a website and a phone number. We also have a fundraiser coming up on May 4th at a place called Joe's on Weed Street here in Chicago. You can check out our website for that. You can get all of our information there. Here's our website information, uh, United States Veterans Art Program, www.usvap.org. You can see our email there, admin, that's admin at usvap.org. If you'd love to get in touch with us and see what we do, we'd love to hear from you. And right now we're going to hear from John Stauffer, who Hello. is with us tonight. He is a longtime Chicagoan. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, and John is a Army veteran. He is somebody who was sort of uh, between things during 1968 while he yes. was in Chicago. You were in school at the time, I yes? I was. You yes. were at, in school and mm -hmm. um, you were in college? During I was in college. You were in college and, and the draft board in your local, you even knew mm, the number. Uh, local board 27. Local Board 27, mm -hmm. if you know anybody that was on the Local Board 27. Uh, Stephanie Sankowski, the clerk, has died, so oh, right. <laughs> she well, will not be watching this evening. I'll bet that you're one of very few who remember the name, uh, the number of their draft board and anyone who was mm -hmm. actually there. Um, so in uh, December of 68, uh, they served you with a Christmas card that said, Hello, we need you. You need to come and see us. Mm -hmm. Yes, my my uh, the only correspondence I've ever received from the President of the United States, ah. Lyndon Baines Johnson at the time. Yes, that's right, December of 68. And where did Lyndon send you? Lyndon initially uh, sent me to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. But you had another name for Leonard Wood. Uh, Fort Leonard Lost in the Woods. Oh, Fort Leonard Lost in the Woods, yes. And uh, was there for about two months, and then about three and a half to four months at Aberdeen Proving Grounds mm -hmm. in Aberdeen, Maryland. Nice time to be there in the spring. Um, and then what I like to refer to is my government-funded sabbatical in, in Southeast Asia. In which is in Vietnam. Right. right. I was in, uh, in Xi'an in Three Corps, uh, just outside of Saigon, and uh, I was attached to the 1st Infantry Division, and our mission mm -hmm. pretty much went up and down Highway 13. Um, and you told me what your MOS was, and um, describe what it is that your job was. It had something to do with repairing optical equipment. Yes. Uh, I was a 41 Charlie. Which optical is not the eyeglasses, by the way. <laughs> I, I initially thought this was going to be great. I would be hanging out at the firehouse. Mm -hmm. The Army fire control has a different meaning. Uh, the optical equipment that uh, lay artillery are different types of uh, telescopes in devices. Mm -hmm. The lenses have to be cleaned, polished, adjusted. Uh, the tolerances are very small. These mm -hmm. guns would fire 
20 some odd miles mm -hmm. and a few few degrees made a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, it was a it was an interesting job. I didn't get to use it too much while I actually was in Vietnam, mm -hmm. but um, it kind of has shown up occasionally in my life. Well, I was going to say <laughs> that you're working with these um, lenses that are obviously made from glass and they uh, refract light and they uh, obviously are um, uh, very weighty and they're mysteriously uh, put together as far as how can that be just sand. It's an intriguing deal yeah. uh, to, to, I mean, I get it a little bit after it's become sand, mm -hmm. but it is just a big kettle of very hot goo. Mm -hmm. It, uh, depending on the types of glass, it usually is heated to about 1900 to 2300 degrees mm -hmm. Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately, the blowpipes are relatively short, so mm -hmm. you do get a little warm mm -hmm. in the process. Well, when you first told me what you did, um, and you work with glass, of course, we were on the phone, and, and uh, you think of a glass blower. Yes. Um, and when you think of a glass blower, you think of little animals and little swirly things, and you think of a country fair, county fair, um, little figurines on a mirror, perhaps, and they're always very cutesy. And um, you immediately let me know that's not really what you do. Um, <laughs> and the more we got to talking, I just really couldn't wait to to see what you were bringing for us to, to look at. Um, you, uh, you, you had this experience uh, wh when you were in Vietnam where you worked with these um, optical lenses and I think that you sort of insinuated that you didn't have any idea what you were going to do after you got out of the service. Exactly. When I grow up is, right. is basically the way I would refer to it. And I'm still in mm -hmm. searching for that. And this is this has become an interesting waypoint mm -hmm. in the process. Um, so you, you essentially uh, got out of the service, went to college. Went for, back to school. Right. For the, something practical. <laughs> accounting, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, got my undergrad degree and uh, later went back for uh, an MBA, again, uh, uh, funded by uh, the Veterans Administration. The, the, your, your, your educational benefits. And through all of this, your part of you is thinking back to this amazing experience with a piece of glass, essentially, mm -hmm. um, that was very much, I'm sure, part of your life for, for quite a while while you were in the Army during Vietnam. Um, and we're going to see and hear a little bit about how you got reinterested in doing things with glass on your own terms. How would you, how did you happen to get started with that? Um, I've had some interesting things happen in my life lately. It has, it's, uh, it's kind of, okay, now what? Mm -hmm. uh, a person who I met briefly gave me permission to do whatever it is mm -hmm. I wanted, and I thought I possibly I could fly or tie flies. I've taken uh, steel drum lessons, mm -hmm. which but I, I don't have the coordination necessarily mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, but my I kept on coming back to glass. Mm -hmm. I, I had seen someone making those little things mm -hmm. at a very young age. And, uh, right. It's Some cool. of us have seen uh, different things done with glass. What would you like for us to show what represents um, not just the beginning or the end, but something that really made you start doing things differently? Because I'm looking at what I have here, and of course, I've already, half of it's already my favorite, so I don't know. <laughs> What to start off with? You might want to start off with the base. I think that that's when you were mentioning glass blowing. That's probably the traditional item that people would understand. I'm going to put this in between us. Okay. Um, and I'm actually going to lift it up to where it's in front of the white part. Here, it's very heavy. I'm going to show it on the overhead, and it's a very, I'd, I'd have to say, uh, almost traditional vase that someone would say, oh, I think I would love 
to buy a vase for my flowers or my plants. You can see the beautiful design here. And this is blown, right? This is blown. This is blown. It's a repeated gathers. Uh, the blue glass uh, banding around the outside. The spots are called marini. They're, uh, you often will see them in paperweights, the small little items that look like little flowers. Right. These are heated up and uh, I believe the technical term is squished into the glass squished. and uh, and then fashioned. It re it, uh, it's an interesting piece. It probably takes about 20 to 30 minutes to mm -hmm. actually go from the first gather to sticking it into uh, an overnight oven. An overnight oven? It needs to be annealed. Wow. If, you do, okay. if it doesn't cool down properly, it will break. And... Um, it, it, it is an all-night process. I wish I could let people know how heavy that is. We're going to show something else that is the kind of um, piece that I might expect to see if I was going into the Illinois Artisans uh, shop, uh, for example. Um, this is a very cool tray. Most of us would be thinking, well, I don't smoke, and I'm trying not to eat so much candy. Um, they might look at that and say, wow, that is really, really cool. Um, mm. It has, what, what are these objects that are? And again, it's basically spare glass. Spare uh, glass. Rods, mm -hmm. uh, an occasional bead, and some other items that were just there. The silver portion is actually silver foil. Uh, oh, really? Some metals actually will react with glass at a similar mm -hmm. uh, temperature. Silver is one, gold, and copper. I'm going to show something right now that really took the eye of uh, one of our people that works here. This is um, a more of a sculptor, obviously not blown. This is a piece. I'm going to show it to you on the overhead, and then I'm also going to show it to you on the screen. It's a very, very heavy, solid, dimensional piece of glass that when, if unfortunately, if we were in the sun or if we had a better angle, we could show you a little bit more about how this is. I'm going to go ahead and show it to you in my palm of my hand very carefully. It's almost as if I won an award. <laughs> Someone gave me an award, and this is it. That's it's it. very, very heavy. Really amazing. And tell us a little bit about this. How do you do something like that? It requires a lot of grinding. This started as a square block of Stuben crystal. The green portion was then um, epoxied onto the onto the piece mm -hmm. and um, this is what turned out I'd like to tell you that I started with that however it was an accident it was an accident okay. <laughs> following it um, it's a very stylized piece it so this is actually epoxied to the clear part right that is a solid piece mm -hmm. of green glass only uh, this and this the rest of it is clear is clear right Right. I'm going to make sure that somehow or other, oh, look, if I go upside down, it shows a little bit more. Mm -hmm. All righty. Mm -hmm. So um, you actually started off with uh, one big hunk of something. We have a caller who is um, probably going to see if they can bid on this, which of <laughs> course, they're, of course, that's not why we're here. Uh, caller, do you, yeah. did you have a question for John? Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Um, I'm assuming that he was uh, in combat. Did that help you what you're doing now with your uh, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder? Um, it, it, I find it somewhat therapeutic. Uh, I, it, I did not go into glass initially thinking that that was going to... to 
improve my whatever. Right. Or, right. However, mm -hmm. it is I I find that it takes a while to do all of this, especially the grinding mm -hmm. and things. Uh, it's a time where you can shut your mind off and uh, almost meditate. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's been helpful and it it does have an effect on PS, PTSD, I believe. Um, thank you for your call. Um, did you have anything to add to that, sir? Well, um, a friend of mine who received uh, a silver star at the bronze star and three purple hearts and his uh, baby finger on his right side blew off and his uh, thumb, uh, how do you call it, uh, re restructured and re rebuilt. Mm -hmm. Right. There, there is an excellent program at Jesse Brown uh, VA over on the west side, actually, um, where uh, they have recreation therapy, they have art therapy, music therapy. You get a referral for that, and we've actually uh, donated um, materials for uh, their recreation therapy department out there. Um, it's I don't think they, they have a kiln that gets to <laughs> 2,000 degrees uh, like this uh, needs, but um, they have a lot of different things, essentially recreation therapy and what you do um, mm -hmm. sort of fulfills a lot of different um, needs that people have, one of which is to work with your hands. Mm -hmm. um, somehow mm -hmm. or other, working with your hands oftentimes forces you to now work with your head mm -hmm. and in ways that aren't normally thought processes that your head works with. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that, as you can see, and I'm going to put on another um, piece of glass, as you can see, generally what you're going to end up with, you're working with color, you're working with substances that um, are nice to look at sometimes. Sometimes people make things that aren't necessarily aesthetically nice to look at, but that's okay too. This is another piece that is sort of my personal favorite. You can see how thick this is. And John was telling us that this is made from different layers of glass only. This is not um, painting in here. It's actually different colors of glass. Um, and how many layers did you say was in here? This is about six layers thick. So you start with one layer, you put um, different uh, th things through it. I wish people could see how dimensional this is because it is almost like it's 3D. It's somewhat trying to get a, uh, a depth of field. Mm -hmm. the, the items that you would like people to perceive as being furthest away go down on the first level and walk their way closer to you through that process. So. We're going we're gonna to put another one on that's very similar to that. Um, that's my other personal favorite, seeing as I'm sort of partial to trees. Um, and you told me a little bit about what inspired you to make this. Um, I, I took a course with a woman who does similar uh, processes. One of the things we were discussing about Vietnam uh, I would like to use this process to capture my thoughts of what the the river valley around Song Bay looked like. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like that anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what I need to do is to get some uh, color photos that would give me some hints about the ground, etc. Et I know what it looks like in my mind, and that's mm -hmm. probably all it needs to be. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's exactly right. And this is about six or seven layers also? Yes. Yes, it is. I'm going to just see if we can hold this up um, so that people can really get a good sense of what this is like. I know that that's not very good close-up, but you can see my hand back there. You can see that that's actually clear glass. Um, and it's just a really beautiful representation of you could you could put that in your window and actually think that you're looking out the window and that that's what exists out your window thank you really amazing 
Um, does that also have to be in a kiln like blown glass? Mm -hmm. Uh, it goes into a kiln in multiple iterations. Each level needs to oh. be basically baked mm -hmm. overnight. Okay. Um, Where do you have this kiln? I mean, you must have to go somewhere. It generally, I I have to go to a studio. Mm -hmm. I I haven't uh, purchased one on my own. Uh, the piece that I'm thinking about doing, uh, the scale would be relatively large, and I I probably would actually have to travel someplace mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. It's. Uh, I'm probably not going to buy anything quite right. that large. Right. We're going to show people one of your alleged mistakes here. Yes. yes. This is, it reminds me of a cross between a, a jellyfish and a, um, there's something that looks like a musical clef in there. And why was it a mistake? What were you supposed to be making? I found a, an unusual piece of glass uh, in order to get twisted rods you actually pull them apart. You mm -hmm. put pieces of white glass, clear glass, and then heat it up and walk away. Mm -hmm. The end of the piece gets stuck to the pipe and usually goes into water or something and hangs around. Mm -hmm. This looked like the end of a pumpkin. I put oh, it on a, well there I is see. no black glass, but put it on a piece of glass oh. that looks like that. Uh -huh. and it just kind of melted itself. Does there was some concern that it actually would blow up the kiln. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully they wouldn't make you uh, be re too responsible for mm -hmm. that. This is really heavy. I wish people could could hold this and see how heavy this is. This is amazingly heavy. This is sort of the rough side. And this is the shiny side. And it's just really uh, very dimensional. You can see almost the layers here. Um, if we had a little bit more of a close-up, you can see that the black stripe here is only mostly on the top. But look at such a gorgeous thing to have sitting anywhere near anyone. It basically is three pieces of glass, three different colors, and then the interaction oh to my. get the others. The yellow and blue turning into green. Well, here's the other favorite of the staff here at Camp TV that um, when we came in with this. This is actually something where the only color, if you can see, I've got a strip of, a flat strip in here, and that's where all the color comes from, all of it, so that you can see how much there is to that. That's the one that everyone was hoping he would forget and leave here at the studio when he's gone today. This is John Stauffer, um, who is an Army Vietnam veteran from Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to show you one more piece. I know they're flashing the light. We're almost ready to go. This has actually a, um, a vase, a shape of a, a fish on the front. Um, with twisted spirals in here. And if we had some flowers, we would definitely have a business going here. There we go. This was excellent. Um, so you're continuing on with your glass work. Yes. And that's just most excellent. We would love to have John back with us. And of course, we'll be telling you exactly what our favorite pieces were. <laughs> Okay. I feel like we just got started here um, at looking at your incredibly gorgeous pieces here that have made us all feel like we're looking at things of beauty. I think you. It is. Thank it's you. really it's really phenomenal. My name is Carol Williams. This is John Stoffer. This is the United States Veterans Art Program. We're here on Can TV uh, once every month on Thursday. Mm -hmm. And we really appreciate you tuning in and watching what Veterans and Arts are all about. Thank you very much.